smiling. Let's talk about the 40 year mortgage being launched by HSBC. We can talk about the regional bank crisis getting worse, pending home sales, everything housing, economy. Let's get into it, folks. This is the daily financial news for August 30th. Uh, let's first talk about the JOLTS report. The JOLTS report, if you don't remember what it is, it's essentially a forward-looking indicator of the U.S. job market. It is job openings. For the last couple of years, we have seen job openings over 10 million. We have seen the ratio approach two to one. What does that mean? That means there are two job openings for every uh, person available. That is an environment where wage price spiral can be sticky. You will see people quitting and changing jobs, all of those things. The JOLTS report in the last three months has dropped off 2.55 million openings. Now, some of those have been filled, sure, but many of them have been closed or withdrawn or whatever you wanna say. So again, the job market is slowing. You are seeing the quits ratio get back to 2019 levels. You are seeing wage, price, wage prices come in or slow down. The JOLTS report now is, uh, is 8.827 million. We are not only below 10 million, we are now below 9 million and clearly heading the right direction. Last month was 9.1. Expectations for this month were 9.5. So again, we are sub 8.9, or we are, yeah, we are sub 8.9 million heading in the right direction. Let's talk about ADP. Again, remember, the ADP report is private payrolls. It is not the uber important Friday number from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, but it is a number nonetheless we have to pay attention to. Remember, in the last six to nine months, they have changed their methodology. And the numbers that come out on Wednesday, frankly, haven't even been close to what Friday's number was. But nonetheless, what happened with ADP? If you remember the ADP report from the last two months, it has been uber strong. It has been above expectations. Well, you know what? It came in under, under expectations. ADP report was expected to show 200,000 jobs created in the month of August. Last month for July, it was 371,000 jobs created. This month, 177,000. This has me thinking, what might Friday's number be? Might we get a number sub 100,000? Might we get a number that is actually negative? Friday is going to be an important day. And why do I say that? All you have to do is go back to the past two months. I think from memory, ADP report two months ago was something like 600,000 or 596,000. The month after that was like, I don't know, 390 or something like that. And then the Friday numbers were both misses to the downside. So now if ADP report comes in at 177, what might Friday be? What might Friday be? So again, we're going to be paying attention. Friday will be a big day. But again, the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, smiling. With the numbers that are coming out for ADP and JOLT, I have, there, why would there be a September rate increase? The Fed is winning. The data is increasingly going their direction. They told us, Jerome Powell in his 15-minute speech said, we have to be careful. There are huge lags. You know, patience is a virtue, things of that nature. Not to be outdone, and this might be the cherry on top of the economic data so far this week. Consumer confidence cracked, broke, shocked to the downside. Let me get the numbers. Consumer, uh, consumer confidence, now again, what these numbers are mean nothing to you. 
What is important is the direction and the miss. So consumer confidence last month was 114. Uh, what does 114 mean? Again, it doesn't matter. What was expectations? 116. So the experts thought consumer confidence would be better or stronger or whatever you want to call it. It actually came in at 106.1. So directionally was a miss. The size of the miss is significant. Consumers are clearly retreating. And that makes sense. Remember the retailers just most recently, Best Buy, I believe. Yes, Best Buy lowered forecast. HP with their PCs missed and lowered forecast. Again, it is making sense. How many retailers are saying the consumer is getting more conservative? Jolt's report, Fed is smiling. ADP report, Fed is smiling. Consumer confidence, the Fed is smiling. We'll see. I don't see a September rate hike. Let me know in the comments below. Do you, think we, do you think we get a September rate hike? Just tell me below, yes or no. I'd love to hear. And then the second question, do you think the Fed is done? Do you think they have zero, one, or two more rate increases in them? I want to hear from you. Let me know below. Question one, are they, will there be a September rate hike, yes or no? And the second question is, how many more rate hikes? Zero, one, or two? Leave some comments below. I would love to hear from you. How about regional banks? Oi. Oy. Regional banks are in a bad spot today. <laughs> As we've talked about, it is going to get worse. Why do I say that? Well, the regional banks are under a microscope. There is more legislation or requirements coming where they may need to increase their capital. What does that mean, Michael? It means they may need to increase their cash that they hold on their balance sheet. Well, what does that mean, Michael? Less lending. If your business had historically relied on regional banks, I don't know what to tell you. It is going to be tough sledding. Go back to that story we heard on the All In podcast in David Sachs. David Sachs was trying to refi a $9 million building very much would have been a regional bank refi. The bank came back and said, you know what, David, we'll do 2.7. Now, he is in a great position. He can write a check, pay it off, refi later. But how many people would have been forced to sell? How many people have $6 million in cash or access to pay that off? How many builders have gone to regional banks to get a building or construction loans that aren't existing? The regional banks are, for all intents and purposes, shut off until they understand the rules, the new rules, the new expectation, the new regulations. Yeah, the velocity of money, it's going to go down, down, down. How about the top? Oh, builder. Sorry, I missed one. Ali Wolf. If you're on Twitter, a great follow is Ali Wolf. That's Ali with an I, A-L-I, Wolf. Uh, she, t she did a survey of builders, which I thought was very interesting. Again, if you follow this channel, you know that I think builders are in a unique spot to fill the, you know, the, the demand that is required. So Allie Wolf asked builders, what is it taking to get buyers off the sidelines? And again, remember, Olivia and I were most recently one of these buyers. So one, 69% of builders are doing rate buy downs. Let me tell you right now, I don't buy that property without a significant rate buy down. We went from something like seven and a half to sub 5%. Number two, 59% of builders are giving closing cost credits. In our case, we were given 10 grand to use for closing cost credits. Number, uh, another one, 22% are lowering prices. In our case, we found a, a new construction that was complete, not advertised well, and we got an 11% discount off list price. So we got a rate buy down, closing cost, and an 11% reduction in price. And then 20% of builders are giving money for upgrades. 
we actually got our lot premium and all of the upgrades that were in the house for zero dollars. So that's why we pulled the trigger and bought a brand new home in the last couple of months. But yes, go ahead and follow Allie Wolf. She is a wonderful follow on Twitter. Hard data, not opinions. She's a great, great follow. Top three hottest zip codes. I thought this was interesting because there are some hot zip codes. I want to hear from you. If, you are, if your buy box is one of these zip codes, let me know what the buy box is doing. And again, this was from an article of the top 10. I chose just to take the top three to be, a, be respectful of your time. The number three market is in Ridge, Ridgewood, New Jersey, 07450. There are 3.3 views per property. The average days on market is 18, and the median price is $1.148 million. That is an expensive market. I'm guessing there's a lot of Manhattan folks shopping there. How about number two? Southington, Connecticut, 06489. They're getting 5.7 views per property, 18 days on market, 368K medium price. And then finally, the hottest market. And if you are in this market, let me hear from you. I'm going to call it Gahana, Ohio. 43230. 5.7 views per property. I'm sorry, 4.5 views per property. 13 days on market, 13, and 351K medium price. Again, you can find this article, I believe it was on Yahoo Finance. How about the 40-year mortgage? The 40-year mortgage has been launched by a big bank. HSBC has officially launched the 40-year mortgage. They have launched the 40-year mortgage for owner OCK and investor residential investment loans. It is my belief, at least currently as of the one article I read, it is currently focused on the UK. But when one bank does this, copycats come out. My question to you is, do you think there will be a big US bank? I'm talking JP Morgan, you know, Wells Fargo, City, you know, the big ones. Do you think there will be a big bank in the United States that announces a 40-year product this year, this year being 2023, not knowing when you will watch this. I don't know. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know I think it's coming. And I think HSBC bringing it to market in a very public way might just be the door opening for other banks to copy. And just so you know, I'm not necessarily a fan of the 40-year mortgage. I think the only thing the 40-year mortgage does is increase demand, which increases prices. I did the math one time, taking a 30-year mortgage and a 40-year mortgage. I assumed the mortgage rate was the same, which admittedly might be a mistake, but I assumed it for mathematical reasons. Basically, what happens from a 30-year product to a 40-year product, if the 40-year becomes common, prices could go up 11 or 12% and get you the same payment. That is what happens when you focus on demand instead of supply. A 40-year product becoming standard in the United States will do nothing except increase prices by artificially increasing demand. Pending home sales. I want to admit I was wrong about pending home sales. I think earlier in the week I talked about pending home sales being down 2%. It was my error. I thought we were reporting August pending home sales. We're at the end of August. What is going on? But we were reporting July numbers. So I will own the mistake. I was wrong. I know a lot of you love to hear it when I'm wrong. So there you go. But what actually happened? Pending home sales were up for July. 0.9, expectations were negative 0.6. I had said I expected it to be down 2%. I expect August to be down negative 2%. So I will hold that, which will be reported in September. 
Just so you know, year on year, pending home sales down 13.8%. Not to be surprised, high rates, new listing activity at record low levels, again, historically low levels. The housing market is broken. Mohamed El Alarian is now saying it publicly. I've seen many interviews where he is being credited with saying the housing market is broken. Let's be clear, he is late. He is not the first to say it, but he clearly will get the credit because he is on TV. But you and I know what's real. We have been talking about a broken housing market for a year. And then finally, oh, 18 years. I think it was yesterday, it might have been the day before. I talked about 1978 and how we had eight years of rising rates. I think in that video I talked about the broken housing market being broken for 12 years. It's not 12 years. If you go and look at the data, which I did with Beth Traverso yesterday, it's 18 years. It took 18 years for housing transactions to get back to 1978. The entire decade of 1980s, transactions were below 1978. So when Goldman Sachs says, buckle up for 2027, they might be early. In fact, they probably are early. People don't, I don't know why people don't go appreciate history. We have had rates explode before and we saw what happened. 18 years. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, shame on you. I have a 53 year spreadsheet, which you can get on my website, onerentalatatime.com for free. It's got what, 15 or 20 economic metrics since 1970. The last tab has all the data sources, so you can see I'm not making up this stuff. Go ask yourself, what happened in 78, 79, 80, 81, 82? The data is there for you. And then finally, the boot camp. If you have any interest in joining the 10-week boot camp, I suggest signing up today. We are quickly running out of spots. Thank you for everybody who's joining. It is really great to see. Again, what are you going to get with the boot camp? We're going to go through 10 topics. We're going to help understand where you are and bring you forward. We're going to start at the very beginning. What market do I choose? We're going to talk about a buy box. We're going to talk about the discipline. We're going to talk about networking. We're going to make sure you're comfortable with the math. On top of that, we're going to do one topic a day but we're going to open up questions for 60 to 90 minutes. That way, everyone is at a different place. Somebody are at the very beginning. Some people are in the middle. I'm going to give you a chance, 10, ch 10 chances, to ask me any and all questions that will help you move forward. I'm going to do this with upwards of 50 people. I'm going to record it, and it's going to become some, something that more and more people can watch. Because what I have seen over the last five years helping you is a lot of you have similar questions. So I figure if we can get 50 people coming in with real world experience in questions, it will help thousands of people. So if you wanna get with me for 10 weeks, and in fact, it will be 11 weeks because I'm gonna give you a bonus, sign up today, it is a thousand bucks. If you, if you have to put it on a credit card, don't buy it, it's not worth the interest. I don't want anybody going into debt for this. Buy it today. Second, if you are disciplined and you just want to get rocking and rolling and get your buy box going, no need to buy the $1,000. Just get the $399 course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. It is proven to help thousands of people get going and close deals. And then if you want to test me out, simply buy the $47 buy box deep dive uh, where students are going through it. We're, we're walking through how to create it, all of that. And then lastly, I have 11,000 videos. I talk to 10 millionaires a week right here on this channel. There's endless amounts of free content. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Remember folks, recessions are where you make moves. The housing market is broken. Days on market are going to explode. This will be your opportunity to find motivated sellers. This will be your opportunity to get creative to get, to get terms and price. This is your opportunity to follow up, to give disrespectful offers. It's not easy, but it is simple. If you want my help, 
We're here. If you buy those, you can join the Facebook group, the private group. It's amazing. Get around people that are doing the work. Folks, have fun. I hope you enjoy the day. August 30th, Wednesday. Bye-bye.